Good morning and a very warm welcome once again to the barn. Pleased to be with you on this Sunday as we explore together in word and music the story of Jesus calling the disciples in this service of morning prayer. O Lord, open our lips. And our mouth shall proclaim your praise. And so as we gather this morning, we come with the thoughts and our hearts and our minds. We come preparing to keep this time holy, that through it we may learn and receive. We may be blessed and a blessing to others. Amen. Amen. night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and always. Amen. Amen.
first reading comes from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians, chapter 15, beginning at verse 1. Now I would remind you, brothers and sisters, of the good news that I proclaim to you, which you in turn received, in which you also stand, through which also you are being saved, if you hold firmly to the message I proclaim to you, unless you have come to believe in vain. For I handed on to you as of first importance what I had in turn received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the Scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he was raised again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures, and that he appeared to Kephas, then to the Twelve. Then he appeared to more than 500 brothers and sisters at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have died. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. Last of all, as to one untimely born, he appeared also to me. For I am the least of the apostles, unfit to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace toward me has not been in vain. On the contrary, I worked harder than any of them, though it was not I, but the grace of God that is with me. Whether then it was I or they, so we proclaim to you, and so you have come to believe. For the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Be thou my vision, O Lord of my heart. Be all else that's not to be saved as thou art. Be thou my best thought in the day and the night. O waking and sleeping. second reading comes from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 5, beginning at verse 1. 
once while Jesus was standing by the lake of Gennesaret, and the crowd was pressing in on him to hear the word of God. He saw two boats there at the shore of the lake. The fishermen had gone out of them and were washing their nets. He got into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon, and asked him to put out a little way to the shore. Then he sat down and taught the crowds from the boat. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, put out into the deep water and let your nets down for a catch. Simon answered, Master, we have worked all night long and but have caught nothing. Yet, if you say so, I will let down the nets. When they had done this, they caught so many fish that their nets were beginning to break. So they signalled their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both boats, so that they began to sink. When Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Go away from me, Lord, for I am a sinful man. For he and all who were with him were amazed at the catch of fish that they had taken. And so also were James and John, sons of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon. Then Jesus said to Simon, Do not be afraid. From now on you will be catching people. When they had brought their boats to shore, they left everything and followed him. For the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Awake, O sleeper, and arise from the dead. And Christ shall give you light. You have died, and your life is hid with Christ in God. Awake, O sleeper, and arise from the dead. Set your minds on things that are above, not on things that are on the earth. And Christ shall give you light. When Christ, our life, appears, you will appear with him in glory. Awake, O sleeper, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give you light. Just to share a few words about the Gospel that we have read. It's something of a fishy tale, hence we've been joined by our fish in the sea this morning as we sit with you in our minds on the shores of Lake Gennesaret. It's a familiar story. It's a story of calling. We are early on in Luke's Gospel. Jesus has begun his ministry and the calling is twofold. The calling is because he has lots of work to do and the pressure is on to begin that work of healing and teaching. And so he needs to gather disciples who will share that, that work with him. But also the very nature of calling disciples is indicative of the kind of work that he does by transforming lives, calling people from their, their trade, their work, their home, into the newness of following him, ministry, in doing what is laid on their hearts in the world around them by their Heavenly Father, as demonstrated to them by Jesus. Uh, and this calling takes place um, on the lake, and we know that um, those who are called, um, Simon and Peter, are fishing and they've caught nothing. And then Jesus speaks to them and there is the miraculous catch and their lives are changed. From now on you'll be catching people. So this fish that they've worked so hard for, they see is now going to be a new kind of work um, in, in catching people, in converting people. And I think we focus very much on the last verses of this reading, the miraculous catch, the nets that are too heavy and big to haul onto the boats. In fact, the boats start to sink and they cry to God uh, and that is part of the conversion. And we focus on that and we think of the plenty that God provides as a, a sign 
of his goodness to us. And we see that over and over again in scripture. We think of the feeding of the 5,000 and the restoring of life. God's grace knows no end. But actually, most of our lives aren't lived in that time of, of plenty and blessing. Because we, like the disciples who are called, over and over again need to come to God for healing. Although they are converted and transformed in this reading today, at plenty of times in the future they will come back with their not understanding, not knowing, sometimes not even believing. And they will require again Jesus to tell them the old familiar story of what it is that he's come to do. We spend a lot of our lives in the image which is on the front of this order of service, this image that you can see before you now, on the lake, in the middle of the night, having caught nothing. Master, we have worked all night long, but have caught nothing. And it is in that time when we have toiled, or prayed, or worked, or worried, or written, or whatever it is that we've been doing, through the metaphorical night or for a long season of our heart and felt far away from God and without his blessing. It is into that very moment that Jesus steps and we see him on the shore. So when we read this reading, I encourage you to identify with those who are waiting and longing and needing the blessing of God's healing and redemption. Because much as we marvel at the moments of transformation and the generosity and the enormity of God's grace, quite often we are waiting and looking and hoping to receive it. Thanks be to God. Amen. You have raised up for us a mighty Saviour, born of the house of your servant David, Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us. To show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before his people, go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to, to the, the Father, Father, and to the Son, and, and to the Holy Spirit, Spirit as, as it was, was in the beginning, beginning is now, now and, and shall be forever. forever. Amen. You have, have raised up for us a mighty Saviour, born of the house of your servant David. David.
Let's just pray. Lord, as we think of the calling of St Paul to be an apostle, the calling of the fishermen to be disciples, we thank you that you call us. You call us to serve you and others in your kingdom. You give us gifts and you help us to know how to use them in the work of our lives or at any special moment. And so we pray that you may help us to cherish your gifts, that your love may be known and that your way may be shown through us and all your children. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray too for the family of your church. We pray for Justin, our Archbishop, for Graham, Alan and Jane, our bishops. And as today we mark the 70th anniversary of our Queen's accession, we give thanks for her role in the life of the Church of England as its Supreme Governor. And we give thanks for the life of dedicated service to you, to the people of this country and the Commonwealth that her reign has embodied. Almighty God, the fountain of all goodness, bless our Sovereign Lady Queen Elizabeth and all who are in authority under her, that they may order all things in wisdom and equity, righteousness and peace, to the honour and glory of your name and the good of your church and people. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. Amen. Lord Jesus, you came down to raise us up. And in a moment of quiet, we hold up before you anyone who is in our thoughts because they are unwell or anxious, in hospital or residential care, for those who are feeling the pain of bereavement. May they know your presence with them, your care for those who care for them, your healing touch for the sick and troubled, your light in times of darkness, both now and always. Amen. Amen. Lord of the hosts of heaven, our salvation and our strength, without you we are lost. Guard us from all that harms or hurts, and raise us when we fall, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So we gather our prayers together in the words that Jesus taught us. Our, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen.
The Lord bless us and preserve us from all evil and keep us in eternal life. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit, be upon you and those whom you love, this day and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Shut 